Well, Polonchik and Matt Michaels here with you. This is ESPN 100.5 and 103.1 KTGR. Well, the NIT is where the Tigers will conclude their season, for better or for worse. The Tigers will play Tuesday night against Davidson, a team that they've played before three times. One and two is the all-time record. The Tigers basically had a two-for-one home-and-home with Davidson from 04 to 06, winning only the final time in Mizzou Arena. Quinn Snyder lost twice to the Davidson Wildcats. It's a team out of the SOCOM that doesn't necessarily match up very well with what Mizzou wants to do, Matt. Well, I don't think that Mizzou's going to be done any favors by the fact that Demon Brooks inside is a very, very stout player. 6'7 forward, 230 pounds. Oh, no, yeah, he's the top scorer for the Wildcats at 17, 18 points per game. So you're going to have to stop him first. It's nothing that Mizzou hasn't seen before. They were able to do it against Tennessee in the home matchup. Maybe they'll be able to pull some of that uh, magic out of their hat defensively and offensively inside against the Davidson Wildcats because... Quite frankly, they might need it. Also, a team that shoots the three ball very, very well. Also, very, very well in transition. Frank Kate mentioned those parts of the game as the fact that it could be something that they need to keep an eye on. And it really hasn't something they've done very well at all season, both of those areas. Well, the three-point defense is something a lot of people stick on. And if you see Davidson starting to try a lot of three-pointers, don't be surprised simply because that's what teams have been doing to Missouri down the stretch run here. But I think this Mizzou team is motivated. Some people have questioned their motivations, either individually or collectively. I think they're motivated to do something in this tournament because I think they feel they have something to prove, maybe for their head coach, maybe for themselves, but I think it's there somewhere. I mean, let's be honest. This is a team with two young rookies inside that didn't have a lot of punch inside, that had some stars outside who kind of faded down the stretch. So for the inside guys, it's to prove yourself for another year. For the guys on the wing and at the guard play, it is to show that you are no flash in the pan, maybe for a future run in a certain professional league or two. But with all that being said, you got to get past a tough team at any stage of tournament play, and that's what the Tigers will be faced with Tuesday night. Frank Haith did say in his press conference on Sunday evening that he believed that the SEC was undervalued. Only three teams into the tournament, Florida, Kentucky, and then Tennessee, one of the last couple of teams in. They get themselves one of the first four games against Iowa. I know that that's probably Frank getting in his SEC stump for the league, but do you feel the league was undervalued? No. No, I don't think. I think Frank Haith is stumping for his league, and he should be. Everybody's doing that. This is the time of the year to say, my league's the greatest. Let's get more people in because if your league's great, then more players want to come to your league, which means they want to come to you, et cetera, so, et cetera. So they did have the most competitive of the championship games among the major conferences. They had the most competitive of the championship games among the major conferences. This is true. However, with all that being said, I think that the SEC brand of basketball – maybe was down a little bit or maybe they a, just maybe they just all beat up on each it other. It took a major hit this year to be concerned and I think the, I mean the A ten has six teams in the dance. Well here's the thing. Mike Slime did say before the season we want to schedule a lot better, but I think that that ended up killing the SEC as far as the teams not being ready to play as strenuous a non-conference schedule as they probably needed to in order to compete. Well, you're going to have to learn sometime. I mean, you can only do it by scheduling really good teams. I mean, look at this Davidson team that's coming up. They beat Georgia pretty handily in the early part of the season in the non-con, and then Georgia ends up being a better team down the stretch, maybe because of experiences like that. We don't know. We know that if Mizzou would have had a tougher strength of schedule, they would have been in more conversations, like that NC State team they beat that found a way to make the tournament, which I know you are just so thrilled with. You can see the look on his face right now. Look at that. He is nonplussed, to say the least. Fact I'm of the matter is, I'm puckering. Fact of the matter is, Mizzou played some teams. Yes, they always have that game against Illinois to fall back on in years when Illinois is good. Sorry, Illinois. Eh, it wasn't so hot this season. But, I mean, you can always say that about your teams. And you need to have a good team to really schedule tough outside of your conference, I think. And this Missouri team is just on the edge of good team, and you need very good and great and excellent to be able to make the dance, and they didn't. Winner of this game could possibly take on Southern Miss or Toledo in the second round of the NIT. Uh, the game, again, Tuesday night, $10 for the public, 5 for students. You'll be able to hear the game on the Zimmer Sports Network with coverage beginning at 7.30 Tuesday night between Missouri and Davidson. For Matt Michaels, I'm Will Palachik on the Zimmer Sports Network.